<laughs> Royalty is your bride. Yeah. Are you happy for your royal ride? <laughs> Don't go splitting my wood. It's my job. <laughs> Everyone knows too. Uh, Jetty. <laughs> I was gonna split some wood and take and do an easy job for a little while, and she's not even gonna let me do that. No, that's my job. Jenny likes doing the wood. Jenny likes wood. <laughs> Jenny likes splitting wood. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if we showed you. I didn't get to it because the video went a little long. We got all this up here because I didn't even show any of us taking any of this up here really, or much of it. But there's the next pile. That'll fill up this half a row and get us one more row. And then we'll get something over this. We'll either put something on top of it for the winter or maybe we will build a shed right here. Anyway, I'm gonna go do some solar. I'm just getting everything, everything prepped here for Jenny. Let's dig through all these goodies. Hope you guys can see me. So this solar shed's become a little bit more of a headache than I was hoping. Um, it, again, like I said, it's kind of becoming the bathhouse of 2018. All this stuff is, like you guys said, it, the, the wires are a little undersized. Um, I was never intending for this to run the system at full capacity. I thought I could run a thousand to fifteen hundred watts on it but i can't because the amperage is too high on the dc side so don't take anything i say here as expert advice it's just i am repeating what i've read and what people have told me and i think we're gonna try to get it fixed up for right now we're gonna do half the system and then i think next time i'm gonna try to purchase a 24 volt inverter uh, a reason the reason i did a lot of what i did and how I did it was because I wanted to, one, keep it simple. I had this 5,000 watt inverter that I had purchased a couple years ago. And I didn't want to buy a fi another $500 component. And that's what I'm just going to have to do, I guess. I know Jenny and I have been kind of purging money at this build and this property for the last few years. So I'm hoping to slow that down a little bit. And that's why I did what I did here. Um, we're going to add some fuses. We're going to add some thicker wire, and we're gonna change things over to 24 volt at some point. There's multiple reasons for that. I'm gonna lower my amperage on my wires so I can use a little bit smaller wire. And I have a um, AC to DC 24 volt charger that a buddy of mine gave me so I can charge this battery bank with a generator if I need to. Anyway, I made some purchases through Will's DIY Will Prose or Prouse, uh, his website. He looked like he knew what he was doing. What he recommended as far as a charge controller, we have this uh, MPPT solar charge controller made by EPever or EP Ever. Uh, not sure how to pronounce it. Doesn't really matter. This is a 150 volt, 40 amp charge controller. Now I'm really going to show my cards here guys, you know I don't lie about stuff or I don't, yeah, I make mistakes. I was always under the impression that because we ran everything in parallel, we were just getting the 19 volts from the panels that was coming into our solar, our charge controller here. This is our cheap PMW or PWM charge controller. And this was basically just an on off switch for that 19 volts. I mean it would drop it down to a useful voltage. But I was always at the I was always at the impression that you had to leave it at either 19 volts for 12 volt or the 38 volts for 24 volt systems, and then the the charge controller just converted it. Well, that's not the case at all, from what I understand now that I did a little more research. Um, we can pump up to 150 volts into this, so this is not only a charge controller; it's also a converter. You know, if you if you look at it that way, this converts whatever voltage you pump into that from the solar panels into a useful amount of power. I don't mean to bore you, I'm just trying to explain my uh, realizations that I had in the last couple weeks of doing this. 
considering we're only going to use 500 watts on it, having a 5,000 watt inverter is just ridiculous. It's just what I bought a couple years ago, and I'm trying to make do with it and use use it for what while I can. It's working, but we're going to use this so I can be a little bit more versatile in my system. I can use this with a 24 volt system, which I would like to convert to. Uh, that'll put lower amp draw through the wires so I can use a little bit smaller wires. It's a bad setup, so we're going to upgrade. Uh, so learn with me. Don't give me too hard of a time. Uh, you know, if I was, I was never trying to teach you guys anything. I'm just trying to show you my experiences. And if you're anything like me, you learn from watching people do stuff, even if it's incorrect. Uh, and, you know, there's upgrades at some point. You're you're learning stuff. So this charge controller hopefully take good care of us. I got to find, got to put another board up here to mount it correctly. I might relocate it because we're going to try to optimize the distance of all our wires too. We're going to shorten our wires as much as possible. Let's get to work. I'll show you some other stuff we got too. We found these. This is what I was running short on. Tons of uh, 2 watt crimps. Some multi-packs, different size uh, crimps. I bought the fuse holder. I think this one's a 250 I uh, bought a 150 amp. I bought extra stuff because when I'm up here, I don't want to have the wrong stuff or not have what I need. So this is a 150 amp ANL fuse holder. Bought a battery switch so I can turn the power on and off to the whole system. None of this stuff was terribly, terribly expensive, guys. I mean, they're all $10 to $15 things. So we got an on-off switch. For the battery so we can uh, isolate the power and then the thing that you guys are probably really really worried about was this Ugh! um there's 10 feet of this two ot heavy battery cable here's the big crimper to crimp all this stuff this is the cheaper version of this i'm going to use this like one time hopefully and then never need it again so i wasn't going to spend $50 on a nice one. A DC breaker. So there's lots of fuses, lots of safety stuff here purchased, guys. So you should be happy. We're going to get it installed more better. More better. I'm hoping when I upgrade to a 24 volt system at some point to get a 24 volt inverter and mount it here. But for the time being, we're using our 12 volt system. Um, I have all the batteries still paralleled. I have the six gauge wire paralleling them, but I have the heavy duty wire ready going to the inverter. I have the heavy duty cable going on the ground or the negative I have this disconnect switch I have this 250 amp ANL fuse which is overkill with these smaller jumpers between here I'm gonna upgrade these soon I might do it tomorrow if not I'll wait till I do the 24 volt system but I'm at least gonna start making these size jumpers with the extra 2 watt wire. So we have the new charge controller, 150 volt, 40 amp charge controller. We have it wired in. We have that white is our positive going through a 50 amp uh, circuit breaker to the fuse. Basically, you can either use a bus bar 
over here and connect everything to the bus bar or you could do it to the fuse. My bus bars are in the mail, so I might change this a little bit. But for right now, we're going from the battery directly to the fuse. So that protects everything. And then we have the negative from the charge controller going over to this switch over here, which is basically just running it directly to the battery. But uh, it was just a shorter run that way. So I have not hooked the solar panels up. I have these plugged in, the positive and the negative for the solar panels but they're unplugged over here at the cabin okay, they're unplugged right here i'm gonna go over to the solar panels we have four 100 watt solar panels that put out a maximum 22 volts 5.5 amps a piece rather than run it in parallel because we have the better charge controller now here it can handle up to 150 volts so i'm gonna run the solar panels in series now which will give us 88 or 90 volts you know give or take and it'll keep the amperage down so our wires won't be stressed out not that they were i guess mc4 plugs can only handle 30 amp i had it wired up where it was only producing 22 amps and it was on a 30 amp wire that could handle 30 amps so i don't know what the, pro the problem there wasn't really a problem but just to lower the amperage, we're going to run everything in series. So don't, don't, uh, like I said, I'm not a professional here. I'm just doing what I think is right from all the videos I've watched and from all your guys' suggestions on our last solar shed video. If you haven't watched the solar shed video that we did a month ago, uh, watch that. <laughs> Come back and watch this and see how it works out. But right now, like I said, here's our four panels. They're in the sun. They're, uh, I have it unhooked, so I want to get it hooked up. So let's get it hooked up. I think that might be okay, because I can just unhooking everything, not moving it, but I might have to move everything a little bit. So guys, we're removing this four to one reducer. Basically starting from scratch wire these up in pair in series all right guys when you run these in parallel you use the adapters that i just removed and you hook all the positives to a four to one adapt four to one adapter and you hook all the negatives to a four to one adapter. Well, now that our charge controller is a, can handle 150 volts, we can run these in series, which means you plug the positive from one panel into the negative of the next panel. Okay, so we're gonna do that. And then we hook up when you run these in series you can't really hook them up incorrectly because you have the female portion and the male portion so you can't really mess it up because you got the female portion as your negative and the positive as your male adapter so they can't really plug them in wrong all right there's two three and then we have again the negative and the positive all right so now all four of these panels are hooked up together oops i need to hook up i need to put an inline fuse And Jenny's gonna hook that one up. You don't need a fuse in this one? Nope. That's the... so... Now these aren't hooked to anything yet because they're disconnected over on the side deck. So now that we have these hooked up in series, we should have 80 to 90 volts coming out of these and 
only 5.5 amps. All right, now that those are set up in series, let's uh, go take the tester over there and see what our voltage coming out is. There we go. So I'm on battery voltage and I have 81 volts coming out of here, DC. So that's pretty much perfect. That's exactly what we expected, 80-ish. So I should be able to plug these in, no trouble at all. Moment of truth. Here we go. Let's go see if our PV light came on. There we go. Fast blinking. I don't know if that's good or not. Let's, uh, I'm going to unplug it and double check. I didn't think it was supposed to blink that fast. But let me check. All right, guys. Well, I was trying to figure things out. Jenny got antsy and had to start, you know, splitting wood again. So you had to put up with a little bit of uh, splitter noise. So sorry about that. The EP ever, EP ever, whatever the heck it's called, is now blinking both lights. I forgot to hook up the MT50 top side, uh, little remote top side at first. So there's a little smiley face on there. It says that I have 64 volts coming in right now, 3.6 amps. So that's good. It's still smiling, and I think it's pretty full. So, I mean, if it's not smile, it says if it's overcharging, it's the little uh, sad face will come on. All right, I think we're good. I just, uh, Jenny was charging the Blue Eddy down at camp, just on the low, on the small generator, just because she wanted to make sure she had it for work in the morning, just in case I didn't get this done. But uh, it was about 80% full, so I brought it up here the rest of the way, and we're charging it. It's drawing 200 watts. I know charging the Blue Eddy, converting... DC to AC or DC to charging and then DC to AC just to put it on the Blue Eddy. I know that's not the most effective way to do it. I know it's the most inefficient way to do it actually, but we're just kind of testing the system. I have a 250 amp uh, ANL fuse on there and I know that's overkill considering the jumpers going between the batteries are still six, uh, six gauge. But uh, I'm not drawing. I'm not going to do any high draws on this until I get that upgraded. So we're back to operating. It took most of the day to get that operating. So that's good. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. There's our solar upgrades for the day. If you have any questions, shoot me a message or shoot me a comment. But this is a way cleaner setup. And then once I get the heavier gauge wires between the batteries, it'll be a really nice setup. So far, so good. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys.